co-host, Darth Salim. And I'm your main host, the Artificial Dragon. And welcome to episode 74 of a podcast, everybody. It's been a little bit delayed, admittedly, for this uber special episode. Not really uber special, but you get the idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we got a patreon uh selected episode this time around but before we get into that i'm going to do a quick quick shout out for our patreon um uh, we have a patreon at patreon.com slash can mail once again that's patreon.com slash can mail and support is always appreciated we have a discord server that's open to everybody in the public um you don't necessarily have to get a patreon membership to have access to it but for our highest and mid-tier, uh, ten five dollars respectively, you will have special rights to vote for future Patreon episodes like this one that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but if you are interested in uh, the highest tier Patreon, you will have access to all of our Patreon exclusive posters. And this month in particular, I am announcing for the first time on this podcast. For this month, we have a our my resident monster girl, the Sif Witchling, or as I lovingly like to call it, Witchling Chan. It is so horrifying. <laughs> Yeah, I took a little bit of an inspiration. Like, uh, at first, I was going with a normal monster gar- girl approach. Then somebody, a particular someone, recommended a Yandere pose. And I was like, oh, that is perfect. That will be perfect for the witchling. That adds the extra creepy. <laughs> exactly. So, if you are uh, scaroused for this witchling chan... She is yours for a high mighty price of $10 for our Patreon tier of Consular. Go ahead, grab her for your poster. I already have her as my uh, phone background, so you know it is good. Um, But yes, uh, before I forget, I'm going to give a shout out to our highest tier patrons. We have Alan Lee, Y Wolves, Cameron Lee. Dr. Emboss, Gobez, Lee Fat, Mr. Mechanicus, Milo, Trainboy, and Tristan H. Thank you guys so much for supporting our podcast for a good couple of years. It's hard to believe that if we for are the, past for the past three years. Yes, this we are way past our third year anniversary, Hannah. And holy shit, we have just uh, a little while ago, I hit 900 subscribers. I saw. It. <laughs> I can't believe that after three years of doing this, that we're almost at a thousand subscribers. I am looking forward to getting that 1K uh, before the end of the year, Hannah. Here's our challenge to you, y'all. Before the end of the year, let's see if we can get a thousand subscribers. I am a little bit scared to. <laughs> I'm a little bit terrified to think about what our uh, 1K episode special would be, Hannah. Well, we'll have to present ideas. Won't Indeed. We? And uh, yeah, we'll present that in the Discord, wherever that will be. Um, but yes, with the Patreon and channel stuff aside, shout out to Hannah's blog. I was about to say, today's episode is brought to you by Celine's Cantina. Indeed. Support my blog. Support Hannah's blog. You have a couple of interesting things coming your way. Renovations shall be happening soon. <laughs> the cantina will be closed for a while. Indeed. But for not the bad reasons you might be thinking of, but for pretty awesome reasons. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to throwing more questions your way, Hannah. Yes, or should I say, please. Celine. <laughs> yes, please. But and I, thank you. Yeah. You are welcome, my fellow co-host. But anyway, Hannah, what is today's episode? This is an episode picked out or suggested by our Patreon supporter, Gobez. Mm -hmm. We are covering... (laughs) (laughs) We're covering Greedo. Yes, we are covering Greedo. (laughs) Arguably one of the... Well, I wouldn't say the worst bounty hunters out there, but... He's kind of in the top 10 worst bounty hunters. <laughs> we, we were talking about this right before we started. <laughs> I, I looked at you and I said, this is probably going to be a short episode. <laughs> and he said, yeah, Greta doesn't really stick around long. And I said, he died in a fucking new hope. Hannah, 
Hannah, remember <laughs> when we uh, remember when I talked about the previous episodes on like Padme, Dooku, and all those movie characters? And they're like, and very they have a uh, notes worth of five pages or something like, like that. My dude, Greedo barely shows up. How much can there be? <laughs> yes, I have notes of three pages. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Not no. as much as Padme or Dooku, granted, but I think this will be a fairly short episode. At l- maybe at most an hour, if we're lucky. Hour and a half going by <laughs> your standards of time. Oh, shut up, Hannah. <laughs> but, anyway. But yes. Uh, yes, we are covering the worst bounty hunter ever. Yeah. Uh, like I said, <laughs> Greedo isn't exactly the worst bounty hunter but a lot of people in the star wars fandom like to call him the worst bounty hunter if i'm going to be completely honest he's kind of a mid bounty hunter he's just a casual a compare compared to the pro bounty hunters okay who's the worst bounty hunter in your opinion then? oh boy um <laughs> i'll have to get back to you on that one because oh boy there's a long ass list but greedo is pretty high up there okay <laughs> We will have to do a, a Bounty Hunter exclusive episode. But speaking of Bounty Hunters, uh, you remember our good old friend, the Bounty Hunters Guide? Yes. There's a couple of entries of Greedo in there that, I could, talk, that I could fall back upon when we get there. That's awesome. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, we are covering Greedo. Uh, probably, I wouldn't say famous for the right reasons he's most famous for dying by han solo's hand yes everybody says han shot first <laughs> the, the famous meme of who shot first was a greedo or solo of course the the original movie the unedited version han solo blasts the fuck out of greedo but we'll get to that specific part but uh yeah um little fun fact i noticed that there it so, so a tour is filled with many, many, many Easter eggs. Yep. As in, it should. In the cantina on Hutta, you can see... Hang on. Because <laughs> it's they're not specifically named Han Solo and Greedo. Mm-hmm. They're, they they tweak their names. Yeah. I'm just trying to look for it. They're H- Hun Duo and Greepo. <laughs> Greepo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I knew you told me that they tweet their names a little bit, but that's so on the nose, it's not even funny. <laughs> it's like if they I just changed... took the D and, sw- and flipped it. <laughs> they just <laughs> took the D. It's like if motherfucking if they had tweaked my own name. Like if, my in real life name, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, is Isaac, and they decided to change it to Zick. <laughs> <laughs> So, that's so funny. That's so silly, but... Hey, it's an Easter egg. That is true. It's That's the entire reason why it's an Easter egg, so that is fair, Hannah. Um, okay, that was actually kind of funny. Fun fact, did you know that the, uh, the, the guy, I wouldn't say the guy, the person who played Greedo in the original movie was actually a actress? Oh. Yeah, and I think they, she was speaking in her native uh, language. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure someone will put it in the comments. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I think that was kind of funny that Greedo is a male character, but he was played by a woman, which I think is hilarious a little yeah. bit. Um, but, yeah, let me go ahead and talk about the legend himself, quote, unquote. <laughs> so, yeah. The um, legendary thing he did was die. Uh, unfortunately. He is, uh, that's probably the most famous aspect about Greedo, both outside of canon and in canon. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, so Greedo was born 44 years before the Battle of Yavin. So this is like, uh, what was it, uh, 13 years before the, the events of the Phantom Menace. Okay. He was like, uh, yeah, he would be 13 when uh, Phantom Menace happened. But anyway, um, so Greedo, he was the newest generation of his clan of Rodians called the Tetsu clan um, and was the offspring of the clan's leader who was known as Greedo the Elder. So he was technically Greedo Jr. Or, uh, <laughs> his, uh, history uh, link between that that I just thought of. All right. Cato the Elder. From Roman history, oh. I think he was a either part of the Roman Senate or philosophy or general. I think 
I think he was a general. And then there was another man who happened to be named Cato, ah. C A T O. Gotcha. And he was called Cato the Lesser. Interesting. Well, Greta wasn't called the Lesser, but at this point, he might as well be the Lesser because it would uh, fit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because Greta the Elder, uh, he was a very famous bounty hunter, and you know, he there's not too much on his story. Like we don't know about his exploits or anything like that. It's just well, it's. It's common knowledge that he's a famous bounty hunter, and he's the leader of the Tetsu clan. Um, unfortunately, the Tetsu clan is a Rodian clan that was heavily persecuted and pursued by a more powerful Rodian clan called the Chatsky clan, led by Greedo's rival, Navik the Red, who brutally murdered Greedo the Elder at one point. Um, and this basically... Forced the Tetsu clan into exile. Like, they got the fuck off of Rhodia and went to some backwater swamp world to live a peaceful life. And Greedo's mother, she would give birth to Greedo. And she talked to the other uh, members of the clan. Like, okay, we gotta hide our violent past for, for our newest generation and live on in peace. And, and just continue on, that sort of thing. So, for the first, like, ten years of his life... Greedo basically lived in the middle of a swamp, knowing nothing except for the uh, the tundral trees, the swamps, and endless play. He was completely oblivious to the common things in the galaxy, like spaceships, blasters, that sort of thing. He was a country boy, sort of speak. Insert insert Shrek peeking out of the corner. <laughs> what are you doing in my swamp? What are you doing in my swamp? <laughs> Okay, that's a funny little reference you threw out there, <laughs> Anna. But, um, but yeah, um, so for the yeah, like I said, for the first ten years of his life, Greedo, along with his younger brother uh, Pedowick, knew nothing about the wider galaxy, let alone his clan's violent past. Though he would sometimes, you know, as children would do, overhear such discussions from the older. Uh, the adults, when they spoke wo words and terminologies unfamiliar to him. Um, like, he would hear words about, like, starfighters, bounty hunters, and this kind of sparked a little bit of intrigue in the young Greer. Like, ooh, what are bounty hunters? What are starships? I'm a little bit interested. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one fateful day, Greedo and his, uh, let me see, Greedo... And his brother were wandering deep into the jungle, and they stumbled upon this hidden cave that hid the three large silver ships that uh, were responsible for bringing the Tetsu clan from Rhodia. They were just hidden away okay. out, of, uh, out of sight. And Greedo was like, are these the, the starships that the adults have been talking about? What the fuck is this? And they went back to the village, you know, like, whatever. Um... And he, while everybody else was asleep, he woke up his mother in the, in the middle of the night. And he asked his mother, like, why are there three silver ships hiding in the cave over there? And the mother's like, Greedo, we should not be talking about this. And Greedo kept pestering her like he wanted to know. You know, he was a young, inquisitive child who wanted to know more. And Greedo's mother, realizing that he would not let this go, basically told him, a little bit of a truth, but basically, like, okay, we came from a planet called Rhodia. We once had a violent past, blah, blah, blah. But she basically gave him the bare minimum stuff to kind of uh, meet his intrigue, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But a couple of weeks later, uh, Navig Vered stumbled upon the Vatatsu clan and... Uh, Shit went sideways, basically. And the Tetsu clan, uh, fortunately, one of the members of the Tetsu clan managed to maintain those free silver ships in such an occasion arose where they need to give a fuck out of Dodge so they don't get slaughtered and all that. Okay. Um, so they evacuated into these free ships. Unfortunately, one of these ships exploded before the hatches even closed, killing all on board. Oof. Greedo and the rest of the Tetsu clan, or what remain of the Tetsu clan, got off of that swamp world and made a pre-hyperspace jump to uh, Narshida. Okay. And uh, if you... 
being a frequent player of Nar Shada, you should know that uh, this is the exact opposite of a swamp planet. It is a bustling Eukonopolis city. Uh, planet, sorry. Yes. And Greedo, he just suffered a lot of sensory overload. Like, oh my god. Because even in his wildest imaginations, he could have never imagined something like this. But he went from... The fucking swamps of Florida. Pretty much, to yeah. To Vegas in a day. Pretty much. Like, his life just changed with a flick of somebody's finger, basically. He went from a swamp to Vegas on crack. And he was just enthralled in this new lifestyle. And he saw, like, the numerous starships. And so the Tetsu clan, they went into the... Uh, the Bowels of a Narshada Underworld, which is kind of irrelevant because Narshada is an underworld anyway, but that's beside the point. Um, and uh, Greedo, he would have numerous adventures. Uh, he would make connections. He would know the ins and outs of a black market and all that. You know, he's just, he's building the little connections, trying to make a name for himself and all that. Because he learned that his father was a great bounty hunter. And he aspired to become just like his father. Become the biggest bounty hunter in the galaxy. Very big aspirations for basically a 13-year-old at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this tells you a lot about Greedo and his, uh, ni- I guess, naivety or something like that? Naive. Yeah, he is very naive. He's so naive, oh my god. <laughs> But uh, eventually, um, at one point, they, his entire family moved from Nar Shada and went to Tatooine, of all places, by the way. Okay. And uh, there's actually a deleted scene in Phantom Menace where young Skywalker got into a fight with young Greedo. Huh. Though if you think about it, Greedo fought the Chosen One and survived. Well, Anakin, <laughs> Anakin was little. That so. is true. But in that entire scene, Greedo basically said that Anakin Skywalker cheated in the pod racing tournament, which is why they got him that kerfuffle in the first place. He didn't. No, he didn't. But Greedo fought otherwise. Well, of course. Greedo's a little shit. <laughs> yeah, Greedo is a little shit. Um, and one of his fellow Rodian friends was all like, you better beware, Greedo. If you continue your violent ways, you will meet a tragic end. Foreshadowing there. <laughs> but yes, uh, as, aside from that little occasion where he was on tattooing, um, well, okay, he still stayed on tattooing. Somehow, he got employeeship under Job of a Hut as a normal thug. And he would, like, do uh, other things, like, uh, like, he would rough up customers, taking back uh, money that was due to Java. You know, the normal thuggish stuff. Not exactly bounty hunting just yet. But during the Clone Wars, he... Okay, so there's an episode in the Clone Wars where he was hired by, all, of all people, the Trade Federation to abduct the daughters of Chairman Papanoida, who was played by George Lucas in Revenge of a Sith. And Luke's daughter played the... Yeah, one of his daughters, yeah. But yeah, that's Gre- a cool little fact. That's a cool little fact, yeah. Um, but Greedo, he was hired by the Trade Federation to abduct the daughters and hold them for ransom, basically. Let me guess, it didn't work out. Well, I mean, uh, he did abduct the daughters. Uh, it it was successful, but in the episode, one of the daughters took the uh, statue of a moon goddess and hit Greedo in the face with it. Um, and he was being a huge amateur. He just placed it on the side, and Papa Noy's like wait, what's this? There's some blood on here. That's funny. <laughs> and that led straight to Greedo. That's it's a funny. really fun episode. But point is, Greedo had a little bit of a gig when you were hired by the Trade Federation of all people. Um, but long story short, there's this really a nice little scene where... Uh, <laughs> I can see Dooku looking at the paper. It's like, fuck that. I'm not hiring him again. <laughs> Here's his, uh, okay, so Papa Noida, uh, finds Greedo, and, uh, they have an audience with Job of the Hutt, who's like, hey, Papa Noida, what the fuck are you doing with my bounty hunter? And Papa Noida, uh, this is actually a nice little scene, because Papa Noida's like, I'm, this little shithead 
this Rodian bounty hunter abducted my daughters. And you, Jabba, uh, Jabba was holding Rhoda at the time. He's like, you are also a father, so you understand what it's like. And you would do anything to get your children back. And uh, Jabba was like, okay, sure, uh, go ahead and do a Greedo as you please. That's very surprising for Jabba the fucking hut. Yeah, as a big of a gangster as he is, he's a damn good dad. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and Negrito's like, no, no, he's lying. I didn't abduct anybody. And Jabba's like, you slimo. <laughs> and Negrito was kind of forced to uh, take Papa Noida to one of the daughters. And uh, there's a bar fight that happens. Greedo runs the fuck out of there like the little bitch that he is. Um, but that's basically his part in the Clone Wars. He was actually voiced by Tom Kenny in that episode, by the oh, way. Oh, that's cool. The voice actor of SpongeBob, fun fact. Tom Kenny does a lot of other voices in the Clone Wars. Oh, absolutely. He's got a wide range of voices. Um, but that's his little appearance of a Clone Wars he'd never heard about again in the entire series, but that Oof. doesn't really matter right now. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> But yeah, he just fucking disappeared throughout the war. Yeah, he, like in literally the episode, he's all like, "They're Pantorans, blast them!" And he hides in a corner, waits for the firefight to die down, and just does the family technique of running away. He got out of dodge and was seen <laughs> until like over twenty years later. <laughs> so fucking funny, more fucking greed all over here. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Um, but he does have a couple of more interesting adventures. After the end of the Clone Wars, uh, when the Empire was expanding its reach to the other corners of the galaxy, um, so Greedo was given a job by a job of a hut to go to, I believe, my Gito itself to basically steal this person of interest from the banking clan. Uh, so he breaks into his office, kills a bunch of banking clan officials, abducts the individual in question, and uh, he sees his little trophy case, which holds the lightsaber of Chaotic Mundi himself. Oh, and he shit. just grabs the lightsaber because he's like, ooh, trinket. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But long story short, uh, so he, so the way that he came in to get to the person of interest, blocked off, and they're in, they're high up in the skyscraper. So he figured, okay, grapple our way out of here. Bam, bam, Bob's your uncle. Um, he gets on the grapple, takes the person of interest with him. Unfortunately, he loosens his grip, and the person just falls to his death. And Greed is like, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> so now he has to go back to Jabba empty-handed, basically. I can just fucking picture that, too, hanging on the grapple. Like, He's all like, okay, this should be shit. easy. Oh, <laughs> no. No, it does not even penetrate anything, just, oh man. <laughs> so yeah, he goes back to Java's palace empty-handed, and he's all like, I am so sorry, Java. The, the person died, I don't know how, but I do have his lightsaber to make up for my mistakes. Please accept this humble gift. And Java, he was not interested. He's he's not He's not Gracchus. He's not Gracchus the Hutt. And he was this close to making Greedo into food for his rancor. Mm -hmm. But one of Jabba's patrons, I forget his name, but he's an Aphorian. Uh, he's a prominent figure in Galaxy's Edge. He was all like, Jabba, I want you to spare Greedo. I am interested in that lightsaber, but I want you to spare Greedo. I'll take it from him. And Java's like, okay, fine, here, take the lightsaber. You're lucky, Greedo. Okay. I'm going to have to make somebody else my Rancor's food now. <laughs> but yeah, that you was... just kill one of your Twi'leks. You know, that is fair. <laughs> when they don't uh, dance to his pleasure, that sort of thing. But Asshole. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Greedo, had... yeah, gr it's kind of funny that Greedo had Chaotic Mundi's lightsaber at one point, which I think is hilarious. Um... But yeah, uh, at another point, Greedo would move back to Nar Shadda to spend more time with his family, and they specifically lived on level 88 in the Karelian sector, specifically. Okay. Um, and he would become aware that the Rebel Alliance used level 88 to hide weapons and other contraband to ship off-world. Um, 
Greedo, he held no sympathy for the Rebel Alliance. And he would find a chance to sell them out to the Empire for, you know, the money and all that stuff. Of course. <laughs> While he did jobs for, uh, you know, good old job over here, he would become a bounty hunter. Granted, a moderate bounty hunter. He he thinks he's such a big shot, but he everybody... He thinks he's hot shit. Yeah, he thinks he's absolutely hot shit, while everybody else like Bubba's like, really? What the fuck? <laughs> you know, I remember a motherfucking joke of uh, somebody... I, Okay, I can't remember what the story was, but there was something like Greedo wanting to commit suicide, and everybody's oh like, God. and everybody's like, he couldn't commit suicide even if he wanted to. <laughs> That's how horrible at his job he is. That's like uh, fucking poor Jar Jar's father. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um. Like, uh, okay, here's his perfect entry in the Bounty Hunters Code, where it's coming down the uh, uh, requirements for joining the Bounty Hunters Guild, where it's like the initiative, training sessions, and all that stuff. Um, And there's basically this entry, uh, you know, where they have their signatures and everything like that. Um, Greedo says, the initiation was rough. And right below it, Bosk basically says, the initiation was a joke. Of course fucking Bosk says that. He's a Trandoshan. (laughs) He's like, that was too fucking easy. Girl. Oh. Like, no, that was tough. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. Um, okay, so there's this one page about uh, hunters shall not interfere with another bounty hunter's hunt and all that. Um, let's see. Uh, Greedo basically says, Boba Fett doesn't obey that one. And Boba Fett right underneath says, bold words from a dead coward. <laughs> <laughs> The roasting session with Greedo is off the charts for this one. God damn. (laughs) Jesus, Boba Fett. He was already dead. (laughs) Fuck, dude. (laughs) Okay, here's another great one. (laughs) Okay, okay. Um, And here's this other section where basically it says, Never deny aid to another guild master. And Greedo says, Any guild master except Bosk. And Bosk writes underneath, You're lucky you're already dead. How does this, like, the the weird time flowy thing, it's like, what the fuck? (laughs) It's so funny, though. It is so motherfucking funny. (laughs) Let me see if I could pull up some uh, well, good ones. Well, you're lucky you're already dead, you fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, here's another great one. Uh, so basically, they're talking about bounty hunting postings. Let me see. Posting agencies have set up shop in every starport from Mos Eisley to the wheel. Each of them registered to some local entrepreneur with not so... Is that... Yeah, okay. Mos Eisley, they're talking about me, Greedo. And underneath, Dingar says, Greedo was as delusional as Bosk. <laughs> but Bosk, he kind of deserves to be a little bit delusional. Greedo, not so much. No, nah, Gre- Greedo is just annoying as hell. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> absolutely annoying. Let me see if I could find that number. He's going one. by on luck, and he thinks he's hot shit. He's like, his shit don't stink. Oh, yeah, here's a good one about uh, the Galactic Range Bounty Hunters, which are like, the highest, highest bounties, like 200,000 credits to 50,000 credits. Yeah. And Greedo's like, I was born to tackle these high-level bounties. <laughs> <laughs> who who said what? <laughs> Greedo. No, was there a response under it or no? No, no. Uh, Damn it. No, I know. That would have been perfect for Boba Fett to reply. <laughs> because holy shit, Boba <laughs> Fett... His words are would have destroyed Mandalore with that sort of fire. Oh my god. Yeah, that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Um <laughs> Oh yeah, we'll get to this later, but Greedo has a huge hate boner for Han Solo, by the way. Yeah, yeah I think we know that. Yeah. Why? We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. But here's a funny one. I'll I'll bet Solo ship is totally illegal because they're talking about like illegal ships and everything. And uh, we get a surprising uh, uh, cameo with Han Solo who writes, I had no idea Greedo was so preoccupied with me. 
like, why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> Get a room, you two. It's not even that. Han's like, why? Why? Like, I'm not interested. <laughs> why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> so far, fucking funny. Um. Okay, <laughs> okay, next? I got it. Yeah, I, I'm so happy that I uh, marked these because they're so hilarious. Uh, okay, um, okay. Here's another fun one about weapons specifically. If disruptors are stupid, how come Boba Fett uses a, a Ten Laws DXR four? And Boba Fett replies, it's not a DXR-6. It's a, DR a DXR-6, not a 4. And the guild armorers are the stupid ones. <laughs> so a little bit of a little back and forth with them, at least. That's cool. Yeah. So in some aspects, Greedo is kind of hated, but also kind of respected a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, it's more, more hate, than, hate respect, than respect, but there's a little mock modicum of respect there um let me see let's see uh i wonder who, oh you remember house selectari which are like the highest bounty hunters house yeah um here's what uh greedo says about that who do i have to shoot to get into house selectari <laughs> <laughs> because he's like i want to join you guys please and let me see. In your uh, wildest fucking dreams. <laughs> okay, here's where the comment comes from. And Bosk underneath replies, Greedo couldn't even have shot himself if he tried. <laughs> Bosk and Boba Fett are too good at roasting Greedo. Oh, Grito. yes. Holy fuck. That was so awesome to find and the read. The man's been killed three times. <laughs> I think he's dead. <laughs> That more fucking Simpsons me. Stop it! He's already dead. <laughs> Just for shits and giggles, the heavy is dead. <laughs> Medic. Um, okay, where was I? Well, let's get back to uh, oh, the lore fuck. shit. But that was so funny. I had to share those. I love that. <laughs> but uh, okay, so he was spending his time on Narshida, and he would eventually get a chance to. Uh, get a taste of real bounty hunting when he encountered two named bounty hunters uh, who go by the nicknames of Warhog and Megadeth. I know, such such edgy names. Warhog is fine, I guess, but Megadeth. Megadeth, yeah. Let me actually share you pictures of what these guys look like. Um, Megadeth sounds like the ultimate edgelord. Okay, the first one is Warhog. And the second one is Megadeth. I gotta say, Megadeth's armor kind of looks badass. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it does look a little bit goofy, but it reminds me of Judge Dredd in Robocop. Eh. <laughs> but anyway, so Greedo would uh, come across these two bounty hunters um, who were after a bounty of their own, which is also a, uh, a uh, high-profile bounty. Um, it's this certain cyborg that goes by the name of Gorm the, the Dissolver. Copy, paste, window. <laughs> okay, I know he may not look like much, but Gorm the Dissolver is an infamous bounty hunter and a product of the Ar of Arcanian experimentation. The Arcanians are like the, uh, the, <laughs> the, um, the elf people, basically. Mm -hmm. One of the elf people, like, uh. If you want to compare the Arcanians with the Kaminoans, the Kaminoans are more... Kaminoans? Kaminoans. They, the, the Arcanians are damn good with cloning technology, but they make the Kaminoans look humane by comparison, which says a lot if you remember the, uh, the Bad Batch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Gorm the Dissolver, he's basically a mismatch of uh, cybernetic parts. Like, he killed a Trandosian and literally took his arm as his own, as you saw in that picture. And uh, this guy is so formidable, he is noted for fighting motherfucking Mace Windu himself multiple times. Damn. And this is the same guy who fought Palpatine and won. Okay. <laughs> so it was, and in, there was a brief conversation where Greedo just stumbles in 
And it doesn't go into detail of how he survived his encounter, but Greedle was one of the few people that actually landed a hit on Gorm. And managed to survive that encounter. Surprising. Yeah, it is really surprising. Like I said, Greedle talks big, but he is kind of respected. And that's probably one of the reasons why he's respected. In return for saving them, Warhog and Megadeth uh, decided to cut Greedo in on a bounty for killing a rogue Imperial Spice Inspector. And as a thank you, Greedo basically tattled on the uh, Rebel Enclave that are chilling out in level 88. The very same area that his family lives at, by the way. This will be important for later. Okay. Um, <clears throat> With a reward money, Greedo was able to buy his own ship, which he called the Munka Hunter. But unfortunately, he was tricked out of most of his money by Warhog. And uh, Greedo, he was kind of like, okay, uh, I'm going to need to lessen the price of buying this new ship. I'm going to need a couple of power couplings. I, I'm not exactly sure what power couplings are, but I guess it's like the spark plugs for cars and all that stuff. I thought those were like power converters. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they're very important parts for a starship. And he decided, you know what? I'm going to steal somebody else's power converters. And he stole two of them from a nearby ship. That ship turned out to be the Millennium Falcon, by the way. Oof. <laughs> and motherfucking Chewbacca found Greedo and restrained him. And Han Solo's like, okay, you weird Rodian fucker. <laughs> For stealing my power couplings, you can have them, but I'm going to want your Rancor jacket. And Greedo's like, fine, here's the jacket. And the Han Solo's like, here, here, I have the power couplings. They're shorted out anyway. I was about to replace them. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and Greedo, he motherfucking doesn't have a jacket. He has two power converters that are useless. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and he basically swore revenge against Han Solo in that instance. <laughs> this is too stupid. I and know. It's so funny. It is so funny and very appropriate for Greedo. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps failing. And it's just like, what the fuck? Oh my God. This motherfucker, <laughs> he is the luckiest slash unluckiest dude in the entire galaxy. One of them, at least. One of them. He's, he's either ro constantly rolling nat ones or nat twenties, more like more of a fucking Jar Jar. But at least Greedo, he's a little bit threatening compared to Jar Jar. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so after that. Uh, a little while later, the Empire would come onto Nar Shadda and attack level 88, which forced Greedo to escape with his new bounty hunter friends. Just in, and it was in the nick of time before all of level 88 would be leveled by a massive explosion. Not only killing the rebels that were there, but Greedo's entire family. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, Greedo was not having a good day with that. No, I don't think he was. And I kind of feel a little bit bad for him now. Eh. <laughs> but a little... Okay, so a couple years go by, he would serve a couple of odd jobs for Jabba and all that. Um, There was one story where Jabba, he wanted to... Uh, so, okay, so he had... He basically paired up Greedo. So this is a canon story, so their rivalry isn't as bad as it is in Legends. But... They kind of came, went off on a rocky start. Basically, Jabba wanted to gain the ashes of his hated rival, so he could do with whatever Huds do with ashes, I suppose. Um, he hired Greedo and paired him up with Han Solo to basically pull off this heist, because the ashes were in the vault of his CEO from Corellia. So. Yeah, Han Solo and Greedo were kind of like a, like a partners in crime for this little operation here. But long story short, shit goes sideways. And um, they found out that the ashes were instead moved to the vault of a particular Moff Tarkin. Oh, shit. So that was out of a window immediately. And along the lines, 
Greedo basically stole the Millennium Falcon after cheating in a game of Sabacc and won it. Okay. And uh, Greedo was basically drunk after winning the Millennium Falcon, the legendary Millennium Falcon that that uh, beat the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs, blah, blah, Um, Han Solo went up to Greedo and beat the living shit out of him. Who wouldn't? <laughs> and took his shit back, and Greedo's like, I will swear revenge on you, Solo. I mean, that's like walking into a bar out in, like, my part of town. Oh, yeah. And taking somebody's truck or motorcycle. Oh, yeah. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Greedo, he basically had nothing. He had the Millennium Falcon for a little while, but he was left with nothing. And he was kind of forced to go back to Jabba again with his metaphorical tail between his legs. But he had a criminal contact that was like, hey, you may not have the ashes, but I might have a way for you to placate Jabba. And he brought him a burnt piece of Ronto meat. And he said, here, use this and say this is the ashes of his rival. He can't, how can he tell the difference? And Greedo was like, okay, I'll use this. And he brought it to Jabba, who was a little bit suspicious, but ultimately he accepted the, the evidence. And he gave Greedo the reward. because he, he's stupid. Yeah. Um, and he gave Greedo the reward money of a million credits. Getting a million dollars out of fucking lying. <laughs> this is not the first time Greedo has done that sort of thing. There's another story where he basically... Oh my God. <laughs> There's another story. Um, I think this is from a certain point of view, that entire novel. I uh, got that book. Yes, you do. I think I, I think you might it. like that story. I need to read it. Yeah. Um, basically... There's uh Greedo is kind of known for uh doing the what's the word I'm looking for? The loophole thing. Uh, there's this one Jawa that Jabba really hated. So Greedo was hired to get this Jawa, brought him before Jabba, threw him in the dungeons, and Greedo discreetly sets him free, captures him again, brings him back to Jabba, gives the reward money, frees him again, captures him again, gives him to Jabba, and gives the reward money. What the fuck? <laughs> He's just exploiting it. Exactly. Damn, okay. He's, he thinks he's hot shit, but you gotta admit it. He's kind of ingenious. Yeah. He definitely knows how to cheat the system. Exactly. Um, there's actually this nice little short story from uh, Dark Horse Comics for this series called Star Wars Tales, where it goes through a bunch of short stories. That particular uh, story where Vader fights a doppelganger of Darth Maul is from Star Wars Tales. Okay. And it goes through this short story called uh, The Heevil on Turk Street, which basically follows Greedo's point of view as basically a classic noir novel. Like, you know, that classic, uh, I'm in the bar, drinking my sorrows away, da da da, da that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Greedo was just chilling out in the cantina one day until he was approached by this woman, uh, a woman by the name of Nima. And she basically approaches Greedo with a job to track down her missing boss. And Greedo was like, oh, uh, Nook? I believe it's Nook? Let me check. Um... No, it's Nemo. It's Nemo. Uh, Timo, Timo, Timo. Nemo hired Greedo to track down Timo, who is a infamous politician in Mos Eisley, who is a known rebel sympathizer. Um, and Greedo's all like, look, lady, I'm a bounty hunter. I don't track down runaways. And uh, Nemo basically took out a large bag of credits, and she's like, here, I'll pay you. Consider this a bounty. And Greedo, basically, he says to himself, it's funny how a little bit of riches can rewrite your personal rules. Steering clear of rebels be damned. Yeah. And he took the credits, and he's like, okay, where can I start? And Nemo's like, well, he went missing, missing a couple days ago. And Greedo was acting fairly resourceful. Like, he, he went around... Uh, the numerous inhabitants of Mos Eisley getting information, like showing them credits, uh, getting them for information, you know, the normal thing. Um, 
Eventually, he tracks down that uh, the politician was accompanying this guy named Knuckle. Knock, knock, and okay. Um, not really relevant. It's just a shady looking dude. And it makes he's you a, think of Knock Dran. Yeah, that is true. Um, so Greedo, he gets the information that this Knock dude commonly goes to his gambling den. And, you know, he does this very casual stakeout, just waiting for this guy to come out. And he sees the guy, follows him into an alley, and then the motherfucker just clobbers him in the back of the head, knocking him the fuck out. And then he wakes up and Greedo just, it's like, motherfucker, he stole my gun and my credits. <laughs> my gun's gone, my wallet's My gun! <laughs> And, God uh, damn, that's out of Looney Tunes. Yeah. Holy and even shit. Gre- even Greedo himself was like, God damn it, that was such an amateur mistake going into a back alley. So Greedo was basically forced to go to the Jawas to get himself a, uh, a cheap blaster and more info. Because fortunately for him, he hid away a couple of credits in his hidden pockets. And, you know, he pays the Jawas, gets his gun, and... The jaw is basically point him out to uh, the knock dude went to this uh, road called Hevo on Turk Street, which is also the name of his story. Um, so Greedo goes to the complex that this knock dude is at, encounters a Gamorian guard who goes over to clobber him. He takes out his gun, and instead of firing, it just explodes in his hands. He's like, cursed Jawas? These things are a piece of shit. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, the Gamorian goes into swing at, at a Greedo. But Greedo just uh, does a good old fisticuff against the Gamorian, knocking him to the ground, and then proceeds to snap the Gamorian's neck. Damn. And then Greedo's like, okay, I'm going to go in. He goes in, and he notices that uh, Nog is torturing or interrogating this politician that he was hired to go rescue and there's this funny little moment where basically Greedo has his inner monologue he's all like I have no sympathy for the rebellion but I do have my own personal honor besides this dude knocked me the fuck out this is a little bit personal obviously he's a little personal he took my money (laughs) and he reaches into his pocket Pulls out a thermal detonator, and uh, the Nog guy was like, wait, 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 Greedo, can we talk about this? And he yeets the, the detonator at the dude, hits him right in the face, knocking him the fuck out, goes over to the politician, you know, unrestrains him and everything, uh, gets the credits from the dude, and he's like, okay, we need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> the thermal detonator explodes, destroying the entire complex. Damn. He just... Does a soft spall special with a thermal detonator there. And then, uh, you know, it's that classic vein where the politician's like, who, who, who are you? Why did you save me? And Greta's like, a friend of yours hired me to go find you. And Nemo was like, wrong, bounty hunter. I'm actually an Imperial spy. And Greta was like, really? I got used by Imperial agents? This feels humiliating. Oof. And Nemo's like, yeah, I was planning to take this politician in to the Empire, but that motherfucker decided to steal him away from me. It would be much easier to hire a bounty hunter than use a bunch of stormtroopers to drag him down. And the politician was pleading to Greedo to save him. And Greedo's like, she hired me to found to find you. It's none of my business right like, now. I, I did my job. I, I did my you. job. I'm, ru- I'm going to walk away from this situation. And Nima, I don't know why she decided to do this. But she's like, nah, Greedo, you're not walking away from this. You know too much. And I can't let you do whatever you want to blackmail the Empire. Put your hands up. And Greedo does as he was told. However, he was prepared for such a situation in case he was backstabbed. He had a little uh, hidden blade underneath his sleeve. And he just Sorry. shot it at her. Okay. Killing her instantly. And the politician's like, oh, thank you, bounty hunter. How can I repay you? And Greedo's like, just doing my job. And he walks away. And his inner monologue's like, now, time to deal with a particular Jawa. 
<laughs> this motherfucker holds a grudge like like no I've other. never seen. Yeah, holy shit. But I think that was a nice little tale that kind of shows how competent Greedo could potentially be. Potentially. Yeah, because in other sources, it's kind of noted by the other bounty hunters that he loves to complain a lot. But in this solo adventure, he doesn't complain as much. He has himself to depend on. Yeah. It's a different characterization, which is kind of interesting. It is kind of interesting. It's, it's a great what if, if Greedo was, didn't act so high and mighty. He could have legitimately been more than a moderate bounty hunter. Or if he was more humble in that regard, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from the interesting stuff, this is the lead up to his shootout with Han Solo. I was wondering when we were going to get to that. So basically... um. So he met up with one of his former mentors, the, the Warhog guy. And the Warhog guy was all like, okay, I saw Han Solo in the cantina a little bit ago. I believe Jabba one, has a bounty on his head. And he needs somebody to bring him in because of all the, the credits that he lost from a spice shipment and all that, blah, blah, blah. And Greedo comes in and initially he did have backup with two individuals that... uh that were supposed to help him, but they decided to pick a fight with a young farm boy named Luke Skywalker, and one of their hands got lobbed off by this mysterious wizard Jedi guy. <laughs> and Greedo was like, well, shit. Well, I gotta improvise. <laughs> and uh, he just waited for his opportunity for uh, everybody to clear out and Han Solo and Chewbacca to go prep up the Millennium Falcon. And Han Solo was going to do whatever he was going to do. And Greedo intercepts him. He's like, going somewhere, Solo? <laughs> yeah, that famous scene. You'll have to uh, watch it one of these days. But okay. uh, there's, there's this one comic I can remember. It's from DeviantArt somewhere, but it's a parody of his scene. Basically, Greedo, he has his gun hold out on Han Solo. And have you ever watched that Robot Chicken short where one of the aliens is uh, talking to Luke Skywalker? And basically, it's a mistranslation. Like, it looks like he's being aggressive, but in reality, he's being a very cool dude and all that. There are a lot of Star Wars Robot Chicken sketches. Oh, yeah. So. They are so funny. But it's a little parody off of that, but with Greedo. And he's like, hey, Solo, how about I buy you a drink? I know I'm holding my gun to you, but it's a, it's a normal cultural practice that we have with my people. You know, Greedo is just being very casual. And Han Solo is digging up his entire thing. Like, I don't have the money right now. Tell Jabba. And Greedo's like, whoa, whoa, what's with the hostility? I know I'm holding my gun at you, but just trying to be nice and yeah he's trying to be civil. nice and han solo is just proceeding with his dialogue and at the final panel greed is like you you don't understand what i'm saying do you and, and han solo's like yeah i bet you have it kills him Fuck. that's a comic that i laughed my ass off once which i think is a uh nice little spin on that little deep on that little scene mm -hmm. but long story short greed only he thought he could easily take Han Solo. It's just him and him. And he was all like, I'm going to kill you, Han Solo. And Han Solo just discreetly pulls out his gun from underneath a cantina table and shoots him dead, basically. Now, as you may recall, the, the famous uh, who shot first, Han Solo or Greedo, depending on what version you look at, Greedo basically shoots at Han Solo, misses him by a mile, and then Han Solo kills him. Or in other versions, Greedo aims his gun at Solo, shoots, but Solo just digitally moves his body like an inch to the left or something. And that misses. sounds like bullshit. <laughs> it's so that hilarious. That one's bullshit. I know, it's so hilarious that Han Solo's like, just moves slightly to it the right. It makes sense that he just shoots him under the table. Exactly. And it, is the debate is the, the debate still going on of Han shot first? Unfortunately, or? yes. But if I go with my own personal head canon, I think it's I think it's more hilarious if it's like a it the the story changes depending on who tells it. It's like a, I was just watching a thing like that today. It's like a game of telephone. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, except the topic of that 
a video essay was candy band. <laughs> but the same thing, the same concept applies. It's like telephone. It, it switches from telling to telling. Yeah, because if you really think about it, I mean, sure, there are the patrons, but they're not exactly paying attention to what's going on over there. It's basically Han Solo and Greedo doing their thing. Only one of them will live to tell the tale. Exactly. But I just think it's a nice little headcanon of mine. But uh, headcanons are always fun. Yeah, headcanons are absolutely they're better than canon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, even though this is the end of Greedo's life, so to speak, it isn't quite the end of his story. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So afterwards, um, Han Solo, you know, he's all like, "Sorry about the mess," and he threw throws some credit to the bartender. Um. After everything is said and done and the bartender closes up shop, he's like, motherfucking, there's a dead rodeo. What can I do with this? Hmm. And the conclusion that he decided to go with was bonkers, let's just say. Okay. He drags Greedle's body into the kitchen and grinds his body up and makes it into a liquor. Need to put that that my that reaction sticker up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the soiling green? <laughs> yeah, but bartender basically what looked at Greed and was like, "Hmm, I I could see him being a liquor in my in my liquor bottle. Hell yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard you of his flabbergast ever. What the fuck? <laughs> and apparently, uh the the Greedo special, I'm gonna call it that now, um the Greedo special is actually has actually got the exquisite taste. By hut standards at least. Ew. <laughs> Let's eat anything. Not wrong. Not <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but I think at the same time, it's weird, but kind of metal in a way that your body has been grinded up into an alcoholic beverage, basically. Yeah. Like basically toasting to Greedo and drinking Greedo at the same time. What the fuck? That's just. I have no other words than what the fuck. And this bartender, he grounded up the body, but he left the head and impaled it on a spike because hey, yo! he didn't like Greedo in life anyway. I know. <laughs> <laughs> legends, man. You gotta love legends. <laughs> I do love legends, but what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, this is this is just turning into a uh, horror film out of nowhere. It sounds like any other day in Barovia. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's fair. That is very fair. Um, so yeah, the bartender he puts the spike out with Greedo's head on top. There was somebody that knew Greedo in life and decided to take the head. Not for bad reasons, but this is actually kind of heartwarming because they took the head and put it into a jar of, of liquid and the individual decided to host a funeral for Greedo, which was attended by a lot of high-profile bounty hunters, actually. Oh, they actually held them a funeral. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, there's Greedo's head looking like a motherfucking <laughs> Futurama head. It looks like fucking Richard Nixon's head. In <laughs> exactly. That's oh what reference. Oh my god, Boba Fett showed up. It was like, what? And Bosk, too. <laughs> That's funny. But like I said, I think it's kind of heartwarming that these dudes actually bother to show up and pay their respects to Greedo. As much yeah. as they more fucking roasted him in the past. But yeah, I think it's kind of heartwarming. It is. And uh, yeah, um, Greedo, he lived a life that wasn't noteworthy, at least to a majority of people in the galaxy. It was kind of a mid-level bounty hunter. But to quote 
Hondo Onaka himself. <clears throat> the Rodian bounty hunter Greedo is one of a few of his trade who is, perhaps, more famous for his death than his life. Yep. And that is the lore on Greedo, one of the worst bounty hunters in the galaxy. <sighs> that ending just had me fucking <laughs> flabbergasted. What the hell? <laughs> yep, Im immediate thoughts. Soylent Green is people! <laughs> or in this case, it's Rodian! <laughs> The wine is Rodian. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, that was that reaction was just priceless, Hannah. Yeah. I am so happy about that. But yeah, that is our episode of Cam Mayonnaise Kill a Jedi, or does this wine smell like Greedo? <laughs> Ew. And no, I will not serve that at the cantina. <laughs> But yeah, um, thank you, Gobez, for throwing this topic at us. I think it's a, a really fun one to cover for the sheer uh, fuckery at the end there. I loved it. Yeah. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, Greedo, he doesn't have that deep of a history, but god damn it, I feel a little bit bad for the guy. Yeah. <laughs> Especially at the end there. Like, that is such... A unceremonious death that he sir that he went through there. Yeah. God damn. But yeah, uh, got any lingering questions, Hannah? Uh, no, not really. Okay. You want to give our audience some closing statements? Look forward to uh, upcoming content. Oh yes, especially as Halloween approaches. And as uh. The cantina goes under the renovations. renovations. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely st looking forward to that. Stay tuned on the podcast and stay tuned on my blog. Indeed. This is the way. And enjoy drinking some Greedo while you're at it. <laughs> May the force be with you. I'm May the force be with you. This is the way. Bye-bye.